Daniel and team for having us um, here today and speaking a few words about the DMZ. As I mentioned, I recently joined the DMZ late December um, and helping build the accelerated programs. And previously to that, I spent five years in the Waterloo ecosystem working with many early stage startups. And just to get right into it, um, when we talk about DMZ, who we are, and kind of what our mission is and why we wake up every day to go to work, it is essentially to change entrepreneur lives. And when we think about our vision, which was usually shared internally with our staff, is we are really excited to create a world powered by ambitious entrepreneurs. And ambitious being one of them, just having entrepreneurs thinking about building global businesses. And, and uh, I'll speak this a little bit. I know DMZ, when we first started, I was an incubator, but now we are uh, building a world-leading tech accelerator, and I'll, I'll get into a little bit more of those details. And how we do it is that we have the playbook for startup growth. And within our programming, we built um, curriculum, access to EIRs, uh, access to customers and investors to help companies grow their businesses. And essentially, we focus on people. A lot of what we do at the DMZ is we're taking bets on founders. And uh, we really look, dig deep to understand the founder's passion and why they want to build a company, what their experiences are. And even if uh, their business is not fully baked, uh, that's what we'll do. Well, that's, that's why they join the DMZ, so we can support them through that journey. And so essentially, we're helping high potential entrepreneurs grow and scale their startups to world-class businesses. And our, more, our most core services that we do at the DMZ, which we call the four C's, which is coaching, customers, capital, and community. I'll talk a little bit, a little bit more details on how we deliver these services to our entrepreneurs. Just to give you a little sense of our impact, uh, currently we have around 68 startups. Uh, it ranges sometimes up to 80 companies at any given time of the year. Our, our acceptance rate is 7.4%, so a very rigorous process in accepting entrepreneurs into our space. Collectively, our community of entrepreneurs have raised over 400 million in funding over the last eight years, and we've helped incubate and accelerate companies over through over 300 companies. And again, these companies, and again, all the hard work and hustle from the founders have created three, over 3,000 jobs in our community. And uh, we continue to get a lot of uh, community engagement, international delegations, investors, customers walk through the door of the DMZ, and as you can see, we have 10 to 12 tours uh, that we take place each week. Uh, most recently, by UBI Global, uh, we were ranked out of 400 institutions uh, as the number one un university-based uh, incubator in the world, and which we're really proud of. I cannot take any credit for that. That was the team before I joined. So uh, really hard-working team that really helped um, get recognized. And again, it's the entrepreneurs. It's the entrepreneurs that are delivering these results, and that's why uh, we can deliver a great experience. A little bit about our the history of the DMZ. So in 2010, uh, the DMZ was founded. It was at that time known as the Digital Media Zone. Uh, formerly, it was a co-working space traditionally for just Rice and students. Um, as of 2015, we rebranded the Digital Media Zone to the DMZ, and we launched a bunch of different programs. And as of this year, we're really doubling down on our accelerator program focused on sales and growth. And how, how do we work? So when we think about the DMZ, our flagship program is our accelerator. Uh, we run three cohorts per year, and we will accept up to 60 companies, and that's the acceleration stage that you see there. But we do a lot of int uh, programs earlier on to support companies, uh, which is kind of our internal pipeline. So on the validation stage, companies that have built an MVP, early forms of revenue, and then our ideation stage, which is our DMZ sandbox, helping companies um, incubate their ideas and get their first few customers. Diving a little bit deep, DMZ Sandbox, we help both on startup creation and the talent creation. So we do, get, we do have a few programs where we work with the university students that are starting to think about ideas and how do we help commercialize that. We do pro, we have, we're running a program right now with Facebook with five companies. Uh, Facebook has put $150,000 of non-equity, um, non-dilutive funding to help these companies grow their businesses. And so that's, that's like a very focused program. Uh, and then we do a lot of stuff on the talent creation, helping uh, expose students to the startup ecosystem, helping them build their skills necessary to join companies. Our DMZ validator, which is the, our pre-accelerator program, these companies have early forms of revenue, um, are in this program from six to 12 months, really trying to grow their teams, build their product out, grow their revenues. And we have a very unique program that we offer in this stage as well, uh, which is our Women Founders Accelerator Program 
which is where we accepted eight, eight female-led founders that are building awesome companies, and uh, we will work with them over four months. It's an intensive program. So when we talk about DMZ Accelerator, uh, we've been running several cohorts. Right now we're on cohort five and six. Uh, today we accepted over 22 companies. On average, our companies are raising over a million in funding. They're growing their teams by 3x. We have this aggressive goal internally that in the four months, how do we help uh, grow, their, grow their revenues by 10x? And how does it work? So over the four months that you're in the program, we do um, a very high intensive program where we you're working with our EIRs, which are which are known as entrepreneurs in residence. We pay our mentors. These are former CEOs, CEO entrepreneurs, executives that help scale companies, and then we put structured program helping them, not just on sales but marketing, product, operations, and then we do a lot of peer learning within the cohorts so that founders can learn from each other, teams can learn from each other uh, to help scale their companies. Uh, something recently we did is uh, our two-week U.S. roadshow. We took eight companies to Boston, New York, and Silicon Valley. We covered all expenses, and we collectively got 100 meetings for these companies. 80% of it was investor meetings. The other 20% was mentors slash customer meetings. And so we're going to be doing this annually. And this is kind of a perk for our companies. They go through this program. We help prepare them um, in terms of making sure they're investment ready, um, and then really open doors for them. And so we'll be doing this annually. And then something exciting for next year, we'll have our first annual startup showcase kind of showcasing our current companies and our alumni companies and kind of the work that we do uh, at the DMZ and in Toronto. So what do we look for when we look at companies? Uh, just very high level, at the sandbox stage, we look at people, uh, entrepreneurs, high potential entrepreneurs. It's pre-revenue, but you really um, have spent a lot of time thinking about what you're trying to solve and how can we help you get your product in the market. In the validator, it's essentially early forms of revenue, um, you have, and you're all, in all these programs, you have to be a full-time founder, and then you're now just looking to like double down on, on your business. And the accelerator, typically we're getting companies that are ranging from 20,000 monthly revenue to up to 150,000 um, in monthly revenue. And so we're really scaling their companies. These teams are usually, uh, founders are looking to become better sales leaders within the organization. Uh, they're looking to grow their sales and marketing teams and uh, thinking about how to expand to international markets. So actually one of our companies has expanded to Latin America, which is exciting and we're supporting them on, on that front. Uh, in terms of our application process today, um, for the earlier stage programs, you submit an application, we put you through a screen, and you pitch to the committee of our DMZ staff and EIRs, and then um, you'll get accepted within four to six weeks, you'll know. Uh, so going back to our services, as you can see, it's coaching, customers, capital, and community. In coaching, we have 10 dedicated EIRs that do over 1,700 hours of coaching. Um, they range uh, from growth, UX, UI design, sales, marketing, as you can see on the slide. But all these individuals have more than 10, 15 years of experience, have been ha part of un companies that have grown to 100 million in revenue, have supported companies either on the uh, scaling companies. So that's really what, one of the most unique factors of what we do is that you will consistently meet these people once a week. They'll help set milestones with you, and they'll keep you accountable, and then help you put out fires as you're building your business. We have active uh, corporate partners that we work with, and one of the key things is being in the heart of downtown Toronto. We're able to co connect our companies to potential customers. So a lot of our companies will secure their first client being part of the DMZ, and we try to foster that, and we have dedicated resources to helping make those introductions. The same thing with capital. Uh, this has really been built out by our investor relations team. We have over 400 investors, both VCs and angels, um, both local and international that support our companies. We do office hours regularly within the DMZ. And part of that is we also have someone dedicated who's our fundra fundraising EIR that will work with the entrepreneur, make sure they have every the ducks lined up before they start these investor meetings. So making sure the story is right, the messaging is right, in terms of the finances is right and helping them also on the negotiation side when they get multiple term sheets. Um, so this is something that we really focus on within the, the DMZ. And probably the, one of the biggest uh, factors that a lot of the companies come to the DMZ is that you know, a lot of them are working out of their garage, out of their homes, and they want to work. Then They don't want to think they're the only ones crazy working on a company, and they want to join entrepreneurs that are trying to build something really awesome. And so we, built it, we do a lot of things within the community uh, to make sure that there's a lot of peer learning, but also building those relationships with one another. 
So who's in our network? We have a bunch of great alumni that have graduated from the program. Some of these logos, company logos you probably already know. For example, Borowell um, raised $57 million in funding, doing extremely well in Toronto. Eva Wong, she continues to come back to the DMZ and support our founders and give back mentorship or advice. Um, one of our models is like as much as we're really focused on accelerating growth, we want to help companies ex accelerate failure. We want to make you working on something for three years, realizing that you could have really tested and experimented really early on. So something that our, our staff and founders continually, what we preach. Uh, just in terms of our team, we're really a 30-person organization. So we run like a startup ourselves, and, um, and we have dedicated resources to help our companies. Uh, we're really proud of our advisory council that we launched a few years back. Um, um, Abdullah Snowbar is the executive director of the DMZ. Mohammed Lachimi was the president of the Ryerson University. And we have folks like Sabrina, who's the head of Google uh, Canada, Yang Wu, who's the CEO of Mars. And so these individuals meet four to six times a year. They help our companies with introductions, maybe spending one-on-one -on -one time with them. Uh, Tony Lacavera, for example, went with our companies to New York City, helped them understand how to do business in New York, and so they're very active in supporting our companies. Uh, we have a lot of great partners that also support um, the DMZ in various ways in terms of discounts and perks for our companies. And then why are we so unique? I mean, we do spend a lot of uh, effort in terms of our experience within the DMZ, making sure that it's, it is a home, and so sometimes the entrepreneurs never leave the space. And the hardest problem we have as an accelerator is that when it's time to graduate, none of them actually want to leave and they want to stay. So we're always, they're always negotiating with us how to, how to continue to stay at the DMZ, which is a good problem to have. Um, and just some fun facts about other uh, DMZ. We have over 100,000 foot tra for traffic each year. We do a bunch of fun things in the space for entrepreneurs, especially for their teams. And uh, it's something that we really pride ourselves in. And in terms of our global reach, I mean, Toronto, we're really proud to be in the city of Toronto, very diverse city, and being able to connect with folks like you in this room, um, being able to connect our companies and start for them to think global as well and think about building diverse teams. And again, we're really proud of like, innovation has no boundaries. Again, why we're having this conference, why we're here today, and thinking about uh, how do we uh, help companies internationally, but also help co Canadian companies go international. Uh, we have an office in New York. Uh, we, our companies can use that space to do business there. We also offer, open it up to all Canadian companies. Uh, if they wanted to do, take meetings in New York, they can definitely just uh, send us a note and we'll set them up. Uh, our footprint, uh, we have 70 international partners. After this conference, I feel like we should have more partners represented on that. Um, but essentially, when our entrepreneurs are thinking about going global, we, we work with other organizations to, and to help them, like if they need a landing space to work out of or just individuals to help them kind of navigate the, uh, the, the local community there. Um, when you think about the, the relationship with the DMZ and Rice and University, one of the thing, cool things, DMZ started as part of the zone learning uh, network and DMZ over the last eight years really blew up and became its own um, its, its own beast in the sense that it, it's, it, we're, we've grown to 40,000 square feet, 30 employees, supporting over 80 entrepreneurs. But outside of the DMZ, we also have a zone network, so within the Rice and University ecosystem. So we have a legal innovation zone, biomedical zone, that's part of St. Michael's Hospital. We have a fashion zone literally downstairs of um, the DMZ. And so all of these zones focus on uh, different areas of focus. Some of them are maybe a little bit earlier on where they're just going doing rapid prototyping and uh, building their ideas and other other places like legal innovation zone, biomedical zone, they'll, those companies will graduate and come into the DMZ. 